Well, I am so glad to be in church today. I have some gifts that I need to give some of my friends here. Uh, let's see. Oh, there's Garrett. Garrett, you know, the other day you and I were talking. And, uh, well, you know, I, I stomped all over your words. I didn't let you get out what you wanted to say. And, and, uh, and uh, well, you know, I, I just, um, you know, I cut you off, and, and I, have, I have this for it. Well, wait, 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 wait. It, this is church, right? So we need to be clean, and it needs to be nice. Let me, uh, let me, let me put this in a baggie for you. Uh, clean myself up here. I've got some, uh, yeah, all right, here we go. Here, here you go, buddy. There you go. Let's see, Thorn. Oh, Thorn. There's, there's Thorn. You know, Thorn. We have gotten to know each other pretty well over the last year and a half or so. And um, you know, in doing that, you you told me something that well, I know it was private, but I kind of, well, you know, I kind of let it slip. And uh, and and I know it'd be something that would be. Em embarrassing for you, so I, I have this for you, and I know before you say I don't want this, just, uh, you know, it's already out there, so that, that's, that's for you, that's for you, and no, 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 definitely not kidding, let's see here, so, uh, you know, I've got a couple more, you're probably wondering if you're getting one, um, you know, uh, Pastor, we, we've, we've talked a lot, and, and you know, I, I broke a promise that I made to you, and I'm, well, here, I'm really sorry. <laughs> and uh, Nathan, uh, you know, when we were talking the other day, I was really sarcastic to you, and, um, well, I, th th this, this has all kinds of rude, nasty things here, and, and uh, well, anyway... Okay, so before you say to yourself, <laughs> I have nothing whatsoever to learn from a guy who would do those sorts of things, I want to ask you real quickly, is there anyone in this room who's guilty of one of those things? Maybe all of them. Maybe, maybe even more. It's rare that a person will intentionally give those sorts of gifts to their friends. We want to give them, the people we love and we care about, good things. We want to encourage them. We want to support them. I remember a time, though, when I said something to someone I dearly love. And as soon as the words were out of my mouth, I wanted to pull them back in, but it's like, you know, putting toothpaste back in a tube. It just doesn't happen. And I could see by the look on their face that I had wounded them deeply. And immediately I said, I'm, I didn't mean it. I'm so sorry. You ever been there? Two other people have been there. <laughs> and this person chose to hurt me back. And they said, you wouldn't have said it if you didn't mean it. You ever been there? The tongue is one of the most powerful tools that we have at our disposal. With the tongue, you can instill a thought in the most in, uh, uh, physically well-endowed person you know that will cause them to doubt themselves that will cause them to, to think horrible things about themselves, even possibly to take their own lives. Or you can say something so encouraging, something so supportive to someone who is very unimposing physically, and that person can feel like they can take on the world like a chihuahua who is going after the biggest dog you ever saw. The power of the tongue is incredible. It is one of the most powerful tools for building up, for encouraging, for supporting others. And it is also the most lethal weapon of mass destruction that you and I have at our disposal. How we use our tongue is the most important 
character quality about us. There are hundreds of passages throughout the Old and New Testament that refer to the tongue and how we use our words. One of the most self-convicting, I think, self-revealing, was penned by Jesus' younger brother, James. Look at what he says. We all stumble in many ways. If anyone is never at fault in what he says, he's a perfect man, able to keep his whole body in check. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole person, sets the whole course of his life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. Turn in your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 4. It's page uh, 816 in the Pew Bible or the Bible in front of you. If you don't happen to own a Bible and you'd like to have one, please take that Bible home as our gift. This passage is one of the most significant passages that actually tell us how we can use our tongue for the benefit of others and to not tear them down. It'll come up on the screen as well. We read in Ephesians 4.29, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. The word translated unwholesome is used on eight separate occasions in the New Testament, and it describes, it describes decaying of uh, rancid fruit. It describes diseased trees. And my personal favorite, it describes rotting fish. Do not let any unwholesome thing come out of your mouth. Would you put a piece of rancid fruit into your mouth? Would you put a piece of rotting fish into your mouth? No, we wouldn't do that. And yet... We allow unwholesome, rancid, rotting things to come out of our mouths and to harm other people. Look at this next slide. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. With our tongue, we can build somebody up. With our tongue, we can put them in their place. With our tongue, we can encourage people. With our tongue, we can discourage people. As you reflect on how you have used your tongue in the last week, which would you say you have done more of? Building up, tearing down. When we spew rancid, decaying stuff onto other people around us, it's like a punch to the face or a sucker punch to the gut. Let me ask you, help me out with some answers here. What are some ways that we use our tongues to tear each other down? Gossip? Sharp answers? Teasing? I didn't quite hear it. Criticizing? <laughs> you can lie to them sure there's so many different ways that we could use our tongues to tear people down now let's shift gears a second how can we use our tongues to build someone else up without lying to them or without holding back the truth See, sometimes we think, well, okay, we're in church. I'm just only supposed to say nice things. Boy, that shirt that, that he's wearing is ugly. But I walk up to him and I say, wow, that's a lovely shirt. So, but what are some honest things that we can do to build each other up? I love you. I love you. There we go. Encourage, Encourage them. 
<laughs> instead of saying that's nice, you just say, oh, that's a shirt. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Next time Brenda says that to me, I'm going to know. <laughs> wow, no, that's a shirt. <laughs> Anything else? What else can you do? Think about what you did the last week. What did you do to encourage somebody, to build them up, to strengthen them? Tell somebody that they, they made you feel good. Okay. Tell someone that they made you feel good. What else? Forgive. Forgive. Anything else? Compliment them. Okay. So here's the thing. The tongue does not have a mind of its own. The tongue does not have a mind of its own. The tongue is a tool used by a very well-hidden and well-protected master. Before we can solve the problem of the tongue, we have to understand the source of the problem. Look at this in Luke chapter 6, verse 45 with me. The good man brings, forth good, brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart, and the evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For out of the overflow of his heart, his mouth speaks. Out of the overflow of your heart, your mouth will speak. I heard this phrase some time ago, and it took me a while to really think about it. But the more I think about it, the more I like it. Listen to this, and look at this on the screen. The heart of the human condition is the condition of the human heart. The heart, the core, the biggest issue regarding our condition as human beings is the condition of our hearts. We're told in our culture and society that we're supposed to follow our hearts, that however we feel is what we're supposed to go with. The heart of the human condition is a condition of the human heart. The heart can be a wonderful follower, but it's most of the time a horrible leader. We do not want to follow after it. If we expect good things, things that build up, things that encourage, things that strengthen, things that help other people to come out of our mouths, we have to be careful what we put into our hearts. Because out of the overflow of our hearts, our mouths speak. If your tongue is critical and acerbic, it's because you filled your heart with critical and caustic thoughts. Think about that. You think to yourself, why do I do that? Why do I say those things? Well, it's because you're putting those things in your heart. You're allowing those things to come in, and you think to yourself, how am I doing that? Well, things come in through here, and they come in through here. What are we watching? What are we listening to? I was really just filled with joy this morning as my grandson's walking around the house singing a Christian song that was on the radio. But I recall other times when he was walking around singing other songs that aren't so great. Because what we put in is what's going to come out. Out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. A heart filled with love will speak grace. A heart that is ruled by peace speaks words of healing and reconciliation. A heart that's filled with faith speaks of trust, faithfulness, and godliness. And a heart that is secure in Christ speaks words of life, love, confidence, encouragement. Our hearts or sort of like this sponge. Now, the word of God is like clear water. If I immerse my heart in the word of God, what's going to come out? Clean stuff, the word of God. The more I immerse it in God's word, as I go throughout my day, the more it's going to come out. But what happens if I immerse my heart and something that's not so good. What comes out? Nasty.
nasty stuff, right? So what do I do to get rid of the nasty stuff that's in my heart? I mean, we all sin, right? I mean, as I was handing out those gifts, can, could you recall a time when you handed out that gift to somebody? You get it into God's word. You get out the yuck. And yeah, a little bit is going to come out at first, but the more we get it into God's word, the more we immerse it in God's word, the more the right stuff is going to come out. What are you immersing your heart in? What are you filling your mind with? What are you, what are you focusing your attention on? There's another source that can cause our hearts to spew out vile things. The people we hang around with. The people we spend time with influence us. 1 Corinthians 15, 33 says, bad company corrupts good morals. Bad company corrupts good morals. Now, let me be very careful here. I'm not saying that as a follower of Jesus, you shouldn't be with people who aren't followers of Jesus. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that when you are looking to strengthen your faith, make sure you are surrounded with people who are strengthening their faith in Christ as well. So that when you are with people who don't know Christ, what's coming out? The good stuff. Not this stuff. So that we can be an influence and an impact on others. We immerse ourselves in God's word. We surround ourselves with people who will encourage us. First Thessalonians 1 Thessalonians 1.5 says, Encourage one another and build each other up. That's a really simple verse. I'm going to give you a really quick application right now. This is You can do this as, you, as you're here now, right now and as you walk out these doors. It's a real short little phrase. So I want this side to say, Encourage one another. Encourage one another. This side, and build each other up. Okay? Encourage one another, and build each other up. Encourage one another, and build each other up. Can we do that? But here's the thing. The words are not going to make the difference. It's what you put in here. So... If you were to take 1 Thessalonians 1.5 and you were to commit it to memory, and when you are tempted this week, today, to say something discouraging, say to yourself, encourage one another and build each other up. Encourage one another and build each other up. And if you, your mom really was wise when she told you, if you don't have something nice to say, Don't say anything at all. Encourage one another and build each other up. In Hebrews 10, 24, we read, consider how to encourage one another toward love and good deeds. So the other part of that application is, once you take that verse, encourage one another and build each other up, then I want you to consider meditating this week. What does that look like for, and fill in the blank. Maybe it's someone that you have a hard time getting along with. Maybe it's someone that you know is far from Christ and you would really love to have an opportunity to tell them about Jesus. How can you encourage them and build them up? What could that look like for you? If you're around people who gossip, you will be tempted to gossip. Uh, that video we started with, Lizzie Velasquez, powerful, powerful story. But as I was thinking about her, I thought to myself, what caused Lizzie to click on that video? I mean, the title was The Ugliest Woman in the World. And she clicked on it. Why? What if it wasn't her? What if it was someone else? What what might she have been thinking? Glad it wasn't me. 4.5 million views. Thousands of comments. Could she have been tempted possibly 
to add a negative comment herself? And if you think, well, you know, someone's not going to influence me that way. You know, kind of the mob mentality. Just think about how did so many well-meaning, good, and in often cases godly people end up following Adolf Hitler? We can be influenced by others. And we need to be careful who we surround ourselves with, who we invest quality time with. The tongue not only has the power to destroy, the tongue also has the power to heal. So what you could do, instead of stomping all over somebody, you could take the time to listen to them, to pay attention to them, to hear what's in their heart, to hear what is really important to them. And if you have hurt somebody, you could come along and, and you could provide some soothing, healing health for them. If you've left a wound that is gaping because of something you have done, you can come and you can staunch the bleeding and you can provide health and healing for that person. Or if, you, um, if you've been tempted to lie and to do something that you shouldn't, break your promise. Cut through the lies with the truth and with love. Now, I want to be clear. Because we're in church, we sometimes, as I've mentioned before, think that we're supposed to just say only nice things to people and we've got we've to pull the truth back. One of the most loving things you can say to somebody is the truth. To tell them the truth in love. To tell them the truth because you love. If you know that somebody's going up to meet somebody and it's an important conversation and it's important that they make a good first impression and they have a piece of chive between their teeth Tell them. Silly example, right? But if you see something going on in somebody's life and you love them, you don't turn the other way. You speak the truth because you love them. You speak the truth in love for them. Pleasant words, Proverbs 16, 24 says, are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul, and healing to the bones. Pleasant words. But there's also another proverb that says, faithful are the wounds of a friend, and deceitful are the kisses of an enemy. I would rather have a friend wound me than an enemy give me a thousand bucks. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. Immerse yourself in the word. Surround yourself with people who are building their faith in Christ and want to help you build your faith in Christ. Use your words as a source of life, health, and healing. Use your words as a source of life, of health, and of healing. I want to end just by reading together out loud. It'll be on the screen, Ephesians 4.29. Let's, let's read this together. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And one last time, 1 Thessalonians 1, 5, let's see if we can do it. Encourage one another and build each other up. Let's do it again. Encourage one another and build each other up. Now you're at a Broncos game and they just scored. Ready? Encourage one another and build each other up. Now the baby's sleeping in the next, next room. Ready? Encourage one another and build each other up. Not trying to be silly. Trying to drive it into our minds and hearts. Because the words aren't what's essential. What's essential is my heart to change. 
so that I have a heart that is filled with encouragement, building other people up. Let's pray together. Thank you, Jesus, for your goodness. Thank you for the way you have worked in each and every one of our lives today. Thank you for the things that you've pointed out to us, for the ways we have used our tongues to encourage, and for the ways that you've shown us and reminded us that we have used our tongues to tear down. Lord, I pray that you would help us this week to encourage one another and to build each other up because of our love for Jesus. In his name we pray, amen. So when the ushers are going to come forward, we're going to receive our offering. This is an opportunity for us to give back to God because we love him and we want to uh, just re let him know that we, we know that everything we have has been given to us by, uh, by him as a gift. Father, we thank you for this offering, and we pray that you would use it to further your kingdom work in our community. In Jesus' name, amen. Worthy is the